So in this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Rover 40 amp MPP charge controller by Renogy. So stick around. So here we have the Rover charge controller, 40 amp from Renogy. Just got some solar panels a little bit ago and need this guy to uh, to run them. A current charge controller won't won't work with them, won't have the power. <coughs> Let's do a quick overview. You saw the front of it. Look at the uh, the key features here. Uh, automatically detects your 12 or 24 volt uh, system voltages. This is what your batteries are hooked up for. You can see your high tracking efficiency of 99%, peak, peak conversion efficiency of 98%, uh, four stage charging with the MPP output, MPPT output, uh, extensive electronic protections, uh, diverse load control, LCD screen with programmable charging. And so your charging data with storage of up to one year. Diecast aluminum design for heat dissipation. And charges over discharged lithium ion phosphate batteries. So this is uh, set up for lithium ion batteries as well. And it has an RS-232 port for the uh, BT-1 Bluetooth module. And uh, you can hook to a PC it looks like as well. your owner's manual there. You have your temperature probe that you put uh, next to your battery. Make sure they don't overheat. Looks like mounting brackets. And of course you have the controller itself. And looks pretty pretty sturdy. The charge controller that we have is uh, also from Renogy, but it's their little PWM uh, 20 amp controller. We got it with their 200 watt kit. Much bigger, much better design. We got the label up top here. Rover 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller. Uh, once again, it uh, automatically detect 12 or 24 voltage. There's a charging current. It's 40 amps. The load current is 20 amps. Let's see here. Max voltage of the solar panels. If you put them in series, it's 100 volts. It's a, yeah, okay, 100 volts at 25 degrees Celsius, 90 volts at negative 25 degrees Celsius. So max power is uh, 550 watts at 12 volts or 1100 watts at 24 volts. And down here you have your solar connections, positive and negative, and battery output, positive and negative, and then you have a load output, which I've never used the load output, so I'm sure you won't be using those for this. And then there's your uh, temperature probe right there. And you've got your indicator lights, and the solar panels, if they're hooked up, that goes on, batteries, I'm guessing it's battery condition, load condition, and then if you have a warning there. Well, maybe we should put some power to this thing and see what happens. So here we have everything hooked up. We have a temperature sensor here. You have the plus and minus of the solar panels input and the battery output plus and minus. So uh, we don't have anything hooked up to the load. Uh, I'm not sure if I plan on using it. You can actually do uh, like a timer preset on these that may be useful in the near future. 
let's go ahead and uh, show you how to get this thing set up. All right, so before we continue, um, I'll go ahead and let you know that if you are interested in getting this particular charge controller or you know any of the ones from Renogy, I'll have uh, a link down in the description to their website as well as to this controller itself. And um, full disclosure, if you do click on the link and you purchase something from their website, the channel will get a small commission, but it's at no cost to you. So once this thing's all hooked up, you need to tell it what kind of battery it's hooked up to. Um, there are settings here where you can just like put in the kind of battery and just let the controller do everything. Just kind of a set it and forget it. Our setup itself, it's working in conjunction with another charge controller for our two smaller panels. And so I'm basically having to set this up to mimic the other charge controller so they work together instead of fighting each other. But you can see here at the bottom, I have it set up as USE, which is user defined, but you can program it to different battery types. And to get into the programming, hold this right arrow down. And there, now the, uh, the user to find is flashing. And you can go down and up, using the up and down arrows to choose which battery type it is. So you got the uh, lithium ion, which is this one here. The next one is the user to find. FLD, which is flooded, which is technically what we have. So if I wanted to just set this up the way it is and just let it do its thing, you know, that's the one I would set it to. But since it's working in conjunction with another charge controller, I want it to kind of mimic that. So I will not be using this particular setting. And then there's the sealed lead acid battery setting right there and then oh there it is the last setting there is for gel batteries and then if you're doing it like I'm going to be doing it you put in the user defined and use the right arrow and it actually gives you a choice to set it up as 12 volt use the down arrow 1224 and it automatically detects we can do the down button again and it's 24 volts, but we're running on 12 volt system, so that's where it's going to be. <clears throat> and then next you can choose your equalize setting. Now for the, the equalize setting, the equalization process, I should say, is a process where it actually overcharges the battery and it boils the liquid in it, the electrolyte, stirs everything up in there and basically kind of freshens up the battery. Now I have it set at uh, 15.2. We have a car battery charger that is hooked up to this system for, you know, if we didn't get enough solar power during the day, you know, it's like run the backup generator and a battery charger and it charges to 15.5. So I got this set just a little bit below and it will run the equalization on its own about once a month. It says once every 28 days in the manual. So that's what that setting's for. And the next setting is the boost charge. This is just to keep the voltage up high. You're still boiling the um, electrolyte. Um, its default setting is uh, two hours on that but you can go in and change that as well um, i chose to leave it alone the charge controller we're working with here it doesn't have the equalize setting but it has the boost it's just a pwm and it's set at 14.7 so i set it to where this thing just takes over you know just 0.1 volts higher um, the adjustments on this are you know, 0.2 volts at a time, so I couldn't get it to 14.7 exact. So I took it to 0.8. And then the next one is float charge. 
Now this is your actual usable power. This is where the charge controller actively works to compensate for any power that you're using from the batteries to keep it at whatever setting you choose. Now, the reason why I chose 13.8 is because that's just a, a standard for lead acid batteries, the flooded lead acid, you know, for vehicles and stuff like that. Um, more modern vehicles run at a little bit higher voltage, but 13.8 is a good standard. Um, a lot of the deep cycle batteries that you get will have all this stuff marked out, exactly what you should set your controllers at, you know, have the equalization setting on it, you know, the voltage and all that stuff. So you'd want to copy that. Um, our batteries don't have any of this information on it or on them. So I just copied a, uh, a car battery, a car alternator voltage for that. And, you know, like I said, you can adjust that as well. And that right there is just the um, just the regular voltage setting where it just normally sits at you know when it's fully charged at rest you can also adjust that in the uh, in the user defined settings 12.3 that is the like lower limit of what I typically take the batteries to. I, I shouldn't say typically. I don't like to get them below 12.5, 12.4, but uh, 12.3, you know, they have you set this lower limit there. This is called a over discharge. I think it's for lithium ion settings to, you know, if it drops below this, it kicks in a, a circuit to try to, you know, revive batteries, anything below this setting. So that's not too important as far as lead acid batteries go, but I went ahead and just set that voltage there. And then we're back to the option. And once you're done with that, just hold the right button down and there we go. And it takes a couple, a few seconds for it to kick in. Uh, it shows the current battery voltage 13.9 there we go you see the uh little dashes going on this arrow right here that means it's actually taking power and charging the batteries voltage is going up it's actually going up pretty quickly this is going up to the boost charge and it went up to 14.5 really quick now you can also use these arrows here and just check on different settings or other settings this setting here this is for the for the load on the charge controller itself it's programmable you have different choices of what you can do um, you can do you know I have it set you know I'm not using it I don't want it on you know very long you know no matter you know what's going on but I couldn't seem to find a setting where it just turns the output off, the load off. So I got it set to one, which means after solar panels stop charging, it turns it on for one hour and then shuts it off. But you can have it set, you know, basically anywhere up to turning on when the solar panels, solar panels stop charging to the next time that they start charging so you can have an overnight setting if you want to turn on some lights or something like that so that's what that is uh, that's the temperature it's in celsius 34 degrees it comes from the temperature probe which i have sitting down next to the two batteries we currently have uh, that's how many amp hours are being used from the load nothing yet because i don't have anything hooked up uh, 14 amp hours so far today coming in from the solar panels to the battery and then that's you know amperage going from the batteries to the load right now and right now we're using you're bringing in 13.72 amps now this is the awesome thing about these MPPT controllers versus a PWM 
a PWM, it can only take in the amperage that the solar panels are given, are giving. The um, control, the uh, panels that are hooked up to the PWM controller that we have, it brings in at most, let's say, I think the maximum is like 12 amps, and that's it. With the PWM controller, technically, the maximum amount of amperage that comes in is uh, 8.87 amps, I believe. But because the solar panels are a higher voltage, the charge controller can take that voltage down to the charging voltage, which, as you saw, is like 13 point or 14.5. But it ups the amperage to continually see the 500 watts of power that are, is coming in at this point in time. That's what's awesome about these MPPT controllers. Alrighty, and as you can see, right now we're getting in 56 volts. They're from the solar panels themselves. And then now we're back to the home screen. And shows the charging into its an MPPT mode, which is its actual charging mode. And it just tracks the maximum uh, power point of the solar panels themselves. Just basically adjust the voltage to actually get the most amperage out of it. All right, we'll go ahead and just really quickly go through these indicators here. Um, the top one here has a picture of the solar array. And if it's lit up solid, that's just, you know, the solar panels are working just fine. And that's under normal charging which is what it's doing. It actually says MPPT. I think this changes to say what kind of charging it's doing. When it goes under the equalization, uh, flashing fast, slow flashing, it's undergoing the boost charge. Um, if it just flashes once, waits a little bit, flashes again, waits a little bit, then that's its float stage. That's you know the 13.8 volts that I was telling you about. And if it has like two flashes in a row, then a space, then two flashes, then a space, and then it's charging at a slower rate than what is needed. You know, like the, you know, somebody standing in front of the solar panel or there's a tree or something like that. It's not getting the power that it's needed. And then of course, if it's off, then it's not, panels aren't seeing anything. It's nighttime or they're not hooked up. And the battery, um, it's the second one here. If it's just lit up solid, it's just normal operation, it's fine. Um, if it flashes slowly, the battery is over discharged. That's that 12.3 I was telling you about. Once it reaches that, that'll start flashing. And flashing slowly, and if it flashes quickly, then it's actually overcharged. You know, some manner or another if it, the voltage goes up higher than the equalization then that'll start flashing really quickly and of course you know, here's the load if it's solid it's on if it's flashing it's overloaded or short-circuited and then right now it is off it is not used nothing's hooked up um, when it comes on for that one hour in the evening time this comes on as well for that one hour and then of course you got the um, error indicator. If it's uh, on, there's an error, you know, check, you know, the LCD for the error code, you know, by going, by using the arrows to find that. <clears throat> or if it's off, which it is now, it's operating normally. All right, so there's your basic operation and setup for the Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller from Renogy. Um, if you like this video and want to follow us along on our journey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you gain any value of this video, hit the uh, thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the notifications icon, the little bell, so you don't miss any of our videos. And until next time, keep kicking up dust.